So all of this right here states simply that we had a functional relationship. Um, we don't need to use the letter f to represent function. This is sort of the name of the function. So um, basically, we would say that the function name can be anything you want. So you can use the letter a to represent is a function of. You can use the letter g to represent is a function of. This f is sort of arbitrary because it probably is something that you primarily associate with function. But in some cases, that may not be totally um, relevant. So let's, let's look at an example of how this helps us. So let's call this, we, we see that the output is called y in symbols, and the input is called x. Now, now we just, when we talk about variables, all, all we're saying is that a variable is something whose value changes from person to person or from moment to moment. So each x is associated with potentially a different y. So each person has a different um, arm length, and therefore we call them variables because they vary, they change from one person to the next. So I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to say y is a function of x. And this allows me to basically compact that notation and not even have to use words anymore. It's entirely in symbolic form. So what if I asked you to evaluate y equals f of 5? OK, well, what do you think that's asking? If you look back at the notation and kind of uh, study what has happened here, what I've changed, all I've done is I've replaced x with 5, and I've left y alone. Well, this probably ch is trying to establish a relationship between x and y. So I know that if x is 5, I probably want to figure out, well, what is y in that case? So I go over to my table and I say, all right, well, if the input, if the x is 5, then let me go ahead and find or identify what the corresponding output value would be. So there's 5, and I see that that links over to the 7. And I would answer this question by saying, ah, OK, 7 is a function of an input of 5. Simple as that. Let's look at it in a better context. So in context, let's suppose that you're comparing four people and you're looking at, you measure their height and you measure their arm length. And the question is, is this a function? Well, a lot of people try to think about the word function a little too practically sometimes. So, oh no, I don't think arm length is a function of height or the output is a function of the input because every uh, two people with the same height could potentially have different arm lengths. But this example is based on data that we actually have. And if you actually have data, then you're identifying whether or not it's a function based on that data alone. So if you only consider these four individuals, do you have a function? And the answer is, well, does every input does every height, every unique height, have just one arm length? Well, I don't see any height that's in here more than once. I see 55, 60, 68, 62. So there's not even a possibility that one input value can possibly have two output values. So I would say that, yes, output is a function of input. Arm length, in this case, which is the output, is a function of height. All right, well, how am I going to write that? Well, I think I'm going to say that height is going to be represented by h, and arm length is going to be represented by l. So in this case, uh, I would write that arm length is a function of a person's height. So what then do you think would you, we would be looking for if we asked the question, evaluate f of 2? Uh, sorry, f of 55. Well, you're probably thinking, OK, well, wait a minute. Let me look stare back at this notation. I don't see the L equals part in here, but I know that L is length is a function of height. So he must be asking me, what is the length since he's giving me a height of 55? And you'd be absolutely correct. I'd come over here, look at the height of 55 in the inputs, and see what the output is that corresponds to it. So this would be an arm length of 22 inches would be a function of a person having a height of 55. Similarly, usually we write solve if you're given the output and not the input. So solve, uh, not 22, I don't want to repeat that. Let's say solve 26 is a function of h. So what do you think we're asking here? Well, I've replaced the length with 26, and I'm looking for the height. If I look over here, I see that that's 68. 